welcome to Bad Music Taste and Other Ways to Ruin Your Life. My name is Dominic. And my name is Sam. Sam has this week's record. This week's record is My Logos to College by The Descendants. It was first released in 1982 on New Alliance Records, and the copy I have here is a repress on black vinyl. But anyways, today's guest is Dave Ron, drummer of Wagwagon and Me First in the Gimme Gimmies. How are you, Dave? I'm good. How are you guys? Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> how, uh, how have you been keeping busy during this crazy uh, time? I've been uh, recording stuff with some friends and doing stuff around the house and <laughs> trying to stay out of some uh, hill fires that are happening in the surrounding area. Oh, wow. Like, like right now. So it's, uh, it's been exciting for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to, to stay bored right now. <laughs> oh, no, you don't need to be bored. There's so much better. There's so many more better, more better. More better things than TV, you know. I've got if I go yeah. outside, I've got ash falling from the sky because of the fires, and and I've got yeah. studio so I can make music with you know some friends. So yeah. hey, it's a good time. We're making the best of it. We're trying. <laughs> yeah. So May sixteenth is one of Lagwagon's biggest songs, but I've always wondered where you got the title. Is May sixteenth a special day or just? Another Saturday. <laughs> well, it, I didn't write. I didn't write the lyrics, so I, so I'm not exactly sure. I think it has something to do with a friend of Joey uh, and that friend getting married to someone. I'm not really sure exactly about the drama involved there, but there's there's something like that. Um, some some kind of thing happening like that. But you know, the song got popular because it was one of the original songs on the early Tony Hawk game. So right, <laughs> that's really why everyone cares about it because it was on that initial game, and that game became huge, and as did so many of the songs and uh, that were on it. So and so we're actually uh, getting to um, you know have a revisit that because of the reissue of the Tommy Ho Tony Hawk stuff. So yeah. it, it's awesome, stoked, and you know I was a skater and we love Tony and all that. So. That's that's bitch. Yeah, I I got that remastered version and all you have now is like a demo that you can play. It comes out in September. And I thought it was gonna have the soundtrack, but it only has like three songs like Goldfinger, uh <laughs> Rage Against the Machine and like some other bands and I had to turn the music off because like those three songs like on a loop, no matter what the three songs are, <laughs> just <laughs> they get annoying after a little bit. <laughs> Everything does yeah did you hear like the beginning uh like drum beat to superman you're like no no <laughs> <laughs> i they just they just put out a, a documentary about it which was yeah. i watched that yesterday that was pretty interesting oh really i haven't seen yeah. it which was ironically called pretending i'm a superman <laughs> yeah wow what have you guys been doing since we've got all this and um, school and all the i mean all the things surrounding the coronavirus and yeah, so school starts up like the first week of September, which it definitely creeped up, at least on me, pretty quickly. Like, mm -hmm. as kind of quarantined as the summer's been, it seems to have been like a month and not three. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, we've really just been we're doing the podcasts, keeping busy with music in any way. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, that, that, this whole thing, I figured when well, we got home from Australia, after we were eventually were our tours eventually canceled because of this because of the coronavirus yeah. so we, we basically got home and right into the quarantine and things this whole thing essentially escalated and so um you know into what we what we've been living through it is weird though because it's just strange to think that it's been as many months as it has right and, and we've you know it's been like this i mean i'll go out and shop and but it's not like you're going out to restaurants or doing any social yeah. real yeah. social gatherings or anything it's it's been a rock i've been locked down because my wife and i she goes to work because she's actually in the medical profession um oh, wow. I, yeah so she's but i mean we come and lock down and uh you know stay stay put and been doing a lot of like quarantine well not a lot of quarantine videos but i did one for lag wagon and then um I got a couple going for some, um, my friend Scott Shiflett and I have been doing some different stuff and I just actually finished some music for something and I'm about, I'm putting the video together for, um, something that's happening later this week for a, a dear friend, 
Steve Soto from the Adolescents and many other bands. So uh, we did a song. We did a song for it, and um, so it's gonna be shown to um, like a, a celebration birthday party for Steve. Yeah. So um, yeah. So the, it's it's you know I mean there's things to do. Yeah, I mean that's great. Looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big adolescence fan. I remember I was at the airport when my dad like read me this article. He was like, apparently Steve Soto died, and that was. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah. Highly influential gentleman and a and, a, and an absolute sweetheart of a of a of a human. So there's not you know nothing. Just he influenced so many because his career went from like. 78 or 79 he played in agent orange adolescence you know, right jack i mean so many bands that um so he was he's truly an og guy yeah, yeah. i mean punk rock let alone california punk rock wouldn't well, be the same yeah. without <laughs> the blue yeah, album yeah, yeah. california california southern california punk rock and uh, but just punk rock in general yeah i mean the blue album one of the greatest just not even punk rock just albums of all time yeah i mean how many times i mean amoeba <laughs> yeah. alone, that song. So. <laughs> I, I i i met casey royer one time and i was so close to just asking him so how many times do you guys say amoeba in that song <laughs> but then i just walked away <laughs> a lot <laughs> a lot yeah <laughs> You have to imagine, like, being in that band not wanting to play that song anymore. <laughs> Just no, from no. that, I don't know. You, you got to be stoked that there's a song, you made a song that, that is popular enough to be a song you'll never not play. So, right. you know, fair enough, yeah. I mean, you get sick of playing a song, but you also have to realize that a lot of bands don't have any songs that people care about. So be stoked <laughs> yeah. that that's actually like a, a staple, yep. classic, legendary song. So the, you know, the people in the in the audience just wanting to hear that okay. one song. Yeah. It's rad. It's rad. So Me First and the Gimme Gimmies is exclusively a cover band, but I was curious if any of you guys have ever even thought about original music or played around with the idea of it. Um, well, I don't think so. And I think it's basically been a cover band. Although I think we, we actually did do an original. Um, it, but it's, I can't even remember what it was, but there was an original that was done or a little bit of something that we did that would, you know, I don't even remember what it was, but it, you know, but otherwise it's really just a cover band. I mean, that's its whole function and purpose in life. So. <laughs> and it seems to and it seems to be working people seem to like it so yeah i mean i think it's cool like combining all those people together to create something new but yeah i was just curious <laughs> yeah i mean, I mean it, <laughs> oh sorry what? oh I, it's it's funny but it's like good music too <laughs> right yeah. mike's a great vocalist i mean so it's it's uh I mean, it's a, it's it's a way to bring music that a lot of people may never have heard or paid attention to. So it's it's like it's a way to widen an audience, you know. And I mean, yeah. guys like you, or you know, a lot of people. There's we do music tunes that you know weren't um, weren't something I was familiar with, and now I'm familiar with them because we did them. And then there's yeah. a lot of music that you know we just have a way. It's it, it's a way of doing some songs that 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 kind of familiarizes to a lot of people that may never have, have paid attention to those songs, you know, it makes them kind of yeah. like repackages them in a different way, but the melodies are what's special. So that's why the songs, you know, last because they're so, they're such great songs, most of them. So. Yeah. It kind of brings it into a new spotlight. <laughs> obviously they're better once we've done them, but. <laughs> yeah. So it's been six years since we got some new gimme gimme's music other than like santa baby and city of new orleans have you guys been working on some new stuff too recently uh well we we demoed a bunch of stuff i don't know it's probably been a year and a half or something ago maybe um but i don't know exactly what's gonna ha come of that and uh, i don't really know what's going on in that in that camp um you know right now and with coronavirus 
Yeah. You know, I mean, all of our tours got postponed a whole year, so everything yeah. that we may have been planning is definitely got shuffled. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the I don't know what the future holds for the gimmies and so uh I mean we're Lagwagon was still basically in our um album support mode when this happened. We yeah. had a lot of tours lined up for this year and then boom. So everything yeah, I mean, got pushed. This- yeah, even because of the album support, I was going to ask, like, new music with Lagwagon. But like you said, everything is kind of more difficult now and more complicated, especially because everybody should just be worried about health first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just stay safe. Wear a mask, for Christ's sake. Right. You know, it's not really – I don't know why it's such a difficult thing. It's not such a sacrifice for such people to do. I mean, it's really easy. Excuse me. <laughs> um, I, it's just the bizarrest thing in the world that people are so resistant to doing something so simple that would make such a large impact you know and yeah. my wife is in the medical field so I mean you know they wear masks I mean there's a reason for it I mean it, it may not be a perfect right. solution but it's a simple it's a simple solution that everyone can do that will make a difference and so yeah. um and that's it. I mean, that's really what it is. So people that are fighting it are just prolonging this and putting their own family and every other family in, at risk. It just doesn't right. make it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I mean, honestly, it defies logic. Yeah, because so. I mean, to me, it's kind of ignorant. Because like you said, like that your wife works in the medical field, which is really awesome. It's like they've worn masks and like how do how do like the people that are resisting it just to go into the grocery store think they feel like they have to be fully covered every single day and they're working to stop this and help people but the people who aren't infected can't even wear a mask just to go grab groceries like i don't know it's kind of ridiculous <laughs> it's it, it, it's absolutely ignorant and it's selfish um, because now you think of all those frontline medical people or anyone that's actually been having to stay and work and do a job. But hey, there's a the phone. Um, uh, you know, if you can't if you can't think about people that are putting their lives, I mean, it, they've been nonstop since this thing started. So yeah. if you prolong it, it means you're prolonging the risk to all those people that have to be involved in it. And that's that's just not fair. I mean, that's just. That's just about as wrong as wrong can be, you know, just because you want to go out and run around. I mean, Jesus Christ, really, is that I mean, I, I would rather wrap this thing up and wear a mask for two months straight. And uh, and then we'll be back out and doing stuff, you know. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree because we even see like kids our age doing things and not wearing masks. And I feel like that in some sense just angers me more because I know like for some reasons, just because it would be uncomfortable at first. I feel better that we're not going back to school yet, but at some point I want to, you know, like I don't want to be graduating from high school through a screen and I feel bad for the people that have had to just because of like ridiculous parties that had to be thrown for no reason. (laughs) Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's not fair. And you know, the kids that are, they're only doing what their parents, what they're, you know, it's not like smarter, smarter than that. I mean, but they're, they're only doing what, what the examples that are being set for them. So when they think that, oh, I don't need to wear a mask, well, that's because their parents are going, I don't need to wear a mask, right? That's what they're exactly. hearing. And that means their parents are just absolutely, you know, just ignorant, lame people. And, you know, I mean, it's a weird time in this country. And, you know, as, as, as young people, man, it's tough. I, I've never, ever experienced a situation like this like the, the the vision and all the you know all that kind of thing and now this thing has just been made so political and right and it's, I, it's not it political shouldn't it's, be a political issue right no it's it a health be. issue it's yeah, a, exactly it's not but <laughs> everything is political now so just to do something it's like oh that's a hoax because it's supposed to be it's like no right it's actually a global problem yeah, it's exactly. all over the world Right, like, so, I don't know why and like Democrats every, and Republicans are brought into the fact that a ton of people are dying everywhere, like... Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's, it's easy. It's not, it's not one specific person or party that did something to, you know, Trump or whoever. It's global. It's, a, it's something that started. So, 
you know, we all just got to, I mean, we all just got to, you know, bite the bullet, you know, and, and, and do what we got to do. And it's not, it's not like your rights are being infringed upon Christ. <laughs> do the right thing. Basically do the right thing. And like wearing it incorrectly is like that. <laughs> That might piss me off more, to be honest. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's really so simple. Honestly, it's 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 mind-boggling that it's simple, but yet people <laughs> want to make it a thing. Yeah. Now look at, I mean, then people are dying. Families are dying. Loved ones are dying. Yeah. For, for no reason, because we can shorten this thing if we all right. just came together and did it. Yeah. That's it. Like a month ago, they said that if everybody just wore a mask, if it could be over within four to six weeks. True, so. true. I mean, I mean, we could get it to um, a manageable level of containment to where we could start living our lives a whole lot more normal, you know? Right. But until these people stop resisting and, and fighting it, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how that's going to work. So life yeah. will just be strange and different. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I don't think everything is gonna go like completely back to normal, like how oh, it no. was. Like it's been too long. <laughs> yeah, like going to restaurants, like fifty percent capacity is just gonna be the new one hundred percent capacity. Nobody's gonna say fifty percent or whatever. It's, <laughs> it's gonna take a while for sure. There's gonna be a lot of shell shock because yeah. after a year of being of uh, being exposed to this and. People are not exactly going to, a lot of people aren't going to run right out and want to be around crowds. And, you know, it's going to take a while and you're going to have to get your confidence up. I mean, certainly, yeah. certainly our industry is going to be the last one to come back because yeah. it, 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 the whole thing is basically being around crowds. So yeah. that's gonna, who knows, who knows when that's going to be back and what it'll look like when it does come back. But, you know, things, things change. I mean, this is, I mean, come on, we've got more and more people. These kind of things are expected to happen. We've had them. This, right. one, this one, this one was just managed very, very, very badly. We yes. could have, this could have been locked up months ago. And totally. I mean, you see how Italy was like with what some of the highest numbers and I mean, they're not perfect, but they're doing a lot better than we are right now. I mean, they're in the thousands, not hundred thousands. And the part that annoyed me was, I think the biggest mistake was letting each state's governors make their yeah. own decisions. Because you saw Georgia schools opened up for a week and a half. And over like, as of like, after the first 14 day limit, there's already like 900 people out. So. Yeah. Well, that's, this is, I mean, that's. That's classic, I mean, that's, I mean, that's classic, uh, the idiot in the White House. He wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't let the states make some decisions. And then in the, in the case that is exactly what government should be a part of, because government has, has the resources to, to handle big things. And right. at a moment when you have a pandemic and it's not just one state or this state or not even a, just a few, it was everywhere. So that's where government has to just make a mandate that everyone has to do this. I mean, that's, that's the whole point of being, you know, having yeah. that kind of infrastructure is you can set the example from the top. And that's where we've been lost is there's just yeah. the example at the top is just, it's just not there. I mean, that's your leader. You're supposed to look for leadership. Right. And you're supposed to go, hey, this is what we're doing. And if we do this for a while, we'll get this back and we'll get it under control. Now, he all he did is actually made everybody question it and all his little minions basically resistant and, you know, called it a hoax and when it wasn't yeah. and ignored all the scientists. That is why you have them around. It's because they know things you don't know exactly you know, the point of that is like that's their specialty <laughs> but you if you i mean why 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 have a specialist if you're just gonna go eh, you know i, I know, know more, right. I I know more. <laughs> it's it's kind of not like funny in a good way but funny in like kind of a mind-boggling way yeah that during a worldwide pandemic the president was like eh are masks really necessary and let me it just question whether himself Right, and question whether I should have a scientist in office with me or just ignore them completely. Like, it's it's kind of crazy to me. I, I couldn't believe some of the headlines. No, he's, I mean, he's basically a, and I mean, no, 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 
uh, I'm not, no disrespect to kids, but he's acting like a really, really childish young child. That's his mentality. No, you're right. (laughs) I mean, not all, I mean, he's just, he's just got this, if you attack him, he has to attack you back or he's, but he's very, very insecure. So you can see that by the way he does things. So (laughs) instead of just, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're the president or the leader of something, not everyone's going to agree with you, but that's just the way it goes. You know, you got to make decisions and they're hard decisions and you got to do it for the greater good. You hope, you know, he's supposed to be the president of all Americans, not just some Americans. So, right. <laughs> uh, but you know, that's, that's just where our problem. And then it just funneled down to all these people that believe him. So they are the ones that just don't think they need to do anything. Cause it's all bullshit, which <laughs> it is absolutely not bullshit. So, right. but um, yeah, it's, it's mind boggling in a, not really a funny way, but it's, you have to laugh because it's right. It's unbelievable. You know, um, but it's all you can do, really. You just hope that some kind of we get we've got some kind of leadership or something or or people just take it amongst themselves and just do what needs to be done. You know, yes. and eventually it'll happen. I mean, enough people will be affected. Even the ones that resist will it'll happen to them if it goes long enough. It'll reach their families or friends or whoever. Yeah. Reality will tell them, oh, or them themselves. And they'll go, oh, shit. Yeah. Maybe they shouldn't wear a mask. But and like maybe the, they're so stupid they won't. I don't know. Like the same people who said this is a hoax, this is a pandemic, are the same people who are like on ventilators or dead. I mean, you want to wear that mask? That's not a fun. That's usually a bad mask to be wearing if you have to wear a ventilator mask. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a no. As they say, it's a no-brainer. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. So, but you guys, you guys are the future. You, you, the, you're the ones that have to be the smart. And finally, we'll get some of these idiots out of the way. And you guys got to rise up and take over. Yeah, this. I mean, we're trying. We're trying. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I just, we just got to allow you guys to grow up first. So, these some of these fools are doing everything in their power to to hurt everybody. You know. So. Yeah. Oh well. It's uh, this has been an uplifting conversation. <laughs> yeah. It'll be better, guys. I promise. It'll be better. Yeah. But this too <laughs> shall pass. <laughs> We're trying to make the best of what we can. <laughs> what we're doing. Hey, that's what and it's you know what's cool in a way it has opened up like things like this, making music, you know, quarantine videos and streaming and I mean, it just opens up other avenues of creativity, which yeah. you weren't doing before because you didn't have to. Um, right. So, I mean, I, I, I like that. I like that I'm able to still make music and things in a creative manner and um, makes you appreciate things, too, that you had yeah. that you, you took for granted. So hopefully a lot of people are, are thinking about things and going, man, I really miss that. When I get back, I'm really, really going to be, you know, appreciative. and so. You know, sometimes yeah. it takes a reset button, you know, of people to, to, yeah. to humble them and, and appreciate what you had because this is how quick something can go sideways. I mean, it's, right. Because, I mean, we were talking about how this probably, like, our podcast would have probably never happened if it weren't for school being online and everything being shut down. Because, like you said, it just makes you start thinking more. And that was when we were like, it could be really cool to talk to people. <laughs> It's a great way to use, utilize, you know, the internet and keeps people, you know, connected and in touch and, and communicating. And I mean, that's great. You know, if, it, if, if there's positive coming out of it, then, then that's awesome. And it's, and it's a lot of people are doing some really cool things. And I think that's going to stay even once things start to come back to yeah. whatever, whatever kind of normalcy we get, which will be different, but it, it'll be cool you know it's making something we're just seeing a, a change so it's yeah. good me and sam always say like that first show back once once allowed is gonna be the craziest thing ever and like the most it's gonna awkward. be a lot of shows <laughs> <laughs> right that's yeah we literally said that Full like tours, bands worldwide. are gonna do like like 50 state tours like twice over <laughs> it's gonna be insane 
scared of Instagram lives. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you guys live? We're in uh, Baltimore. Yeah. Baltimore. Wow, cool. <laughs> How's so life in Baltimore? Yeah. So you can tell. <laughs> We were uh, we were planning on going to that uh, lag wagon less than Jake show at the in Baltimore. Right. <laughs> well, we'll get you guys in on the list, and uh, we'll hang out <laughs> when we eventually make it there. So yeah, <laughs> thank you. That'd yeah. be awesome to meet you guys in person and hang out. So yeah, we, as well. <laughs> we were even talking about that. We were like, you know how cool it's gonna be when we can go to shows and we can be like, oh yeah, we did like an interview with these people and like, yeah, we have a podcast. Like, like it's going to be like a whole thing. My, there's like this pizza, pizza place in, uh, in Baltimore and like their logo, it's called Johnny Rads and the yeah. logo is the black flag logo. <laughs> like, yeah. Of course. So my line is always like, I'll like Facebook message these people and be like, do you want to go to dinner at this place? And then they'll never say anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> we you're gonna we have went, a million bros by the time tours yeah. start. You're gonna have you're gonna right. know everybody. Yeah, that's right, that's gonna, the great part about this is we've been able to make friends with like our favorite musicians. <laughs> exactly, we'll like help run the merch tables. You know, <laughs> open doors. <laughs> totally. Don't worry, we'll stand like this the whole night by the by the doors. <laughs> Hey, what's the weather like in Baltimore right now? Uh, it's it's all right. Yeah, I mean, hot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is it hot? Yeah, yeah. It's finally like, cooling so down this a is little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't tell. I could almost think it's winter because you've got a beanie and a sweat jacket on. Yeah, it, people like I wore the the beanie just year round for some yeah. unknown reason, in People have, like, texted me and, like, just said, why are you still wearing it? <laughs> it's kind of, like, part of your brand now. You can't stop. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've worn it for two out of the three months of summer. I can't stop now. <laughs> yeah. Keep it going. Keep it going. It's just cold in my house. <laughs> yeah. Got that AC cranking, huh? <laughs> And I'll go down downstairs to uh to the basement to like play music, cause it like I I, I play the drums and whenever I go down there, it's like super cold. So I'll put on like a sweatshirt and a beanie. That's cool. Let's see, I yeah. got my. Uh, <laughs> so I can track some music. Yeah, we just got a new. My dad's plays the drums too, so uh, we just got a new SJC drum set. Oh, nice! That's awesome. And then we put like this overhead projector right above it, so we'll like turn the lights off and play along to the shows. Yeah. Right on. So yeah, that's one of the positives. <laughs> and I always. That's what you got to do. Find the positive. Yeah, I. I'm oh, sorry. No, you're fine. I've been trying to, like, escape our pandemic world, so I've been reading, a, like, I, I read a lot, but I've been reading even more, and I've just been flying through books now, so I've been going to all these different places, and, like, at dinner, we'll have, like, the classic, so what did you do today, and I'll just explain the entire plot of a book, and when I look up, my family's, like, I lost you at, like, the first sentence. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's great, though. I mean, Read those books. That's a, that's a great way to be. You got plenty of time for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I like to I like to collect and listen to records, so I'll do that a lot. And then at that at the dinner, what did you do today? I oh, I listened to Static Age by the Misfits. <laughs> Sounds fun to me. <laughs> well, oh sorry. No, I mean. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. You can. <laughs> okay, so I mean, we've had a really good conversation. I had like another question, but <laughs> so um, me first. Like the band is named after a children's book I've heard. So I was more curious on how that conversation came about. <laughs> so I wasn't actually there when the name was when it was given the name. I I I know it's a children's book, but I don't. <laughs> 
I don't know. I've heard a story that someone actually named the band. Um, I, I mean, I know the person who did that. It, and it, it just kind of comes from just, you know, me first in the gimme gimme. It's kind of like that whole guest list type situation. Like everybody wants to be, you know, it's always about me, 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 me. And everybody. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so supposedly this friend of ours named the band and I'm, but I wasn't around for when it happened. So but I think it is funny that there's a child's book that's called Me First in the Gimme Gimme. <laughs> it's great. I need to own it. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta like get copies for everybody in the band. Totally. Totally. <laughs> right. Your next Instagram live, you're gonna call it a live show and it's just you guys reading to the audience. <laughs> Flipping through. Or yeah, what was what was that thing that like Greg Graffin did, like when the new Bad Religion record came out where he just like sat by the fireplace and read a book while the while the record played did he really yeah there's a video on like the epitaph or like bad religion youtube or something yeah. like that i missed that one <laughs> <laughs> i just need to like sitting sit in a rocking chair reading me first in the gimme gimme <laughs> <laughs> yeah so just out of curiosity, how is it different to go from playing in a band like Lag Wagon to playing in a band like uh, the Gimme Gimmies? Uh, well, the Gimmies is more straightforward. You know, it's it's not, um, you know, as technical, I mean, you could say, or um, not nearly as much fast. You know, it's, it, it's yeah. more straightforward stuff. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just kind of what it is. Um, I mean, I enjoy both. I enjoy, I, I enjoy doing both because one is more, it's easier to do the gimmies because I can just, I can just, you know, just pound away and play rock basically. And, um, yeah. and it's fun, you know, it's just goofy and silly and sort of a, sort of a comedy act in the same, at the same time. And then lag wagons, whatever it is, you know, we do our tunes and they're, you know, you got to kind of be a little bit more on the ball playing those songs yeah yeah <laughs> all right well thank you so much for your time thank yeah you. this is great <laughs> yeah Who's next interview um i think that's greg hudson on friday yeah all right on <laughs> which <Hello>. yeah. okay <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah take care and stay healthy all right great. Yeah. thank you you too yeah. I'll be looking for you in Baltimore next year, hopefully. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> if, uh, if it happens, we'll, like, send you an email, tell you for yeah. Please do. Please do. Awesome. I'll remember. We'll do, part two. we'll do part two of the interview in person. <laughs> yeah. We can interview the whole band. Yeah. <laughs> that would be better, because they have answers that I can't answer. So you can ask <laughs> Joey what's going on with Nate 16. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank You're you. You're so welcome. Thank you, guys. Take care of yourselves. Thank you, yeah. you too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.